Hi, I'm Matt Gordon, and this is Getting Started with MicRim OS. In our last episode, we looked at the differences between traditional Superloop applications and kernel-based applications. Today, we'll follow up with a look at how the MicRim OS kernel is structured. Before we start digging into any multitask application code, let's take a look at the structure of a project that incorporates the MicRim OS kernel. As shown here, the MicRim OS project structure has four layers. The fourth layer, at the top, contains your own application's code. In most MicRim OS-based projects, this code would consist of a number of different tasks and would make use of a variety of kernel services. Below the application code are two layers that represent the MicRim OS software and which implement the kernel services. The software is split into two layers in order to reflect our efforts to always deliver highly portable code. The MicRim OS modules consist primarily of ANSI C source code, and each module is responsible for performing a few hardware-specific operations. The code that implements these hardware-specific operations is always kept separate from the portable portion of the module. So, in the third layer, just below the application, is the portable code. This implements most of the API functions that would be invoked by your application. And moving down to the second layer, we have the hardware-specific code, which is just above the hardware itself. That's a high-level overview of the relationship between your application and the MicRim OS kernel. Now let's look at these layers in a bit more detail. In the layer of portable code just below the application, we have three blocks. One of these blocks represents the kernel itself. The other two blocks, labeled CPU and lib, represent software that implements important services used by both the kernel and your application. They are actually part of a larger block of software normally referred to as the common module. And they warrant a bit of explanation before we move on to the hardware-specific layer. Let's start with the CPU block. The code in this block contains a variety of declarations and definitions needed by the other parts of a MicRim OS-based project, including the kernel itself. The CPU block can be thought of as utility code. For example, it contains data type definitions and macros for enabling and disabling interrupts to create critical sections. Similarly, the lib block contains code that is also used by several MicRim OS modules. In this case, the code consists of declarations of standard library routines, such as memcopy and stringlink. Let me pause a moment, because there's something worth mentioning about how we've implemented the lib block. MicRim OS doesn't make any calls to standard C library functions. We provide our own versions of these functions because there can be issues with the library implementations available from third parties. Many of these issues revolve around the use of library functions in safety-critical applications. It can be very difficult for developers of safety-critical systems to certify code that invokes standard library functions. Depending on the toolchain, the functions may not be available in source code form. And even when they are, there may be problems certifying the code due to a lack of requirements documentation or failure to follow standards. The functions in the lib block give safety-critical developers a much better foundation for a certified product. And there's one other thing. The lib module is written specifically for multitask environments. This means that unlike the library implementations that often accompany embedded toolchains, the module's functions can be invoked in kernel-based applications without fear of data corruption. So, there are at least a couple of benefits to using the code in the lib block. However, you should keep in mind that this code does not constitute a complete standard C library. It contains only the library routines necessary for the MicRim OS modules. Below the portable layer of code, we have the hardware-specific layer where again we find three modules. The first two of these modules corresponds to what is known as a port. A port is code that adapts a module to a particular piece of hardware. More specifically, a port adapts high-level code to a CPU architecture. This allows the kernel and the CPU block to easily run on any architecture once a port has been written for it. The third piece of hardware-specific code is a BSP, or board support package. The code in a BSP, unlike that in a port, is tied to a particular hardware platform. It is board-specific, in other words. For the MicRim OS kernel, the BSP takes the form of the Gecko SDK. This is a comprehensive collection of drivers and low-level code for the EFM32 and EFR32 device families. The SDK is provided by Silicon Labs in the Simplicity Studio IDE along with the MicRim OS kernel. The combination gives you everything you need to quickly get up and running with the kernel and begin writing multitask applications. So, to sum up what we covered today, a project based on the MicRim OS kernel includes five elements. Your application, the kernel, the CPU module, the lib module, and a board support package. 
The MICRIM provided elements in each project can be easily ported to different hardware by making changes to the port and VSP code. But if you're using the Simplicity Studio IDE, you won't need to do any porting yourself. Simplicity Studio provides all of the hardware-specific code needed to run kernel-based applications on Silicon Labs microcontrollers. Our next episode is where we get our hands dirty. We'll jump into the first steps in writing a MICRIM OS-based application, using the initialization function, and creating a task. See you next time.